I think we came across quite a few a few problems to start with in the actual design, but since we've kind of finalised our design, the build's gone without really a hitch at all. Um, so that's been quite good. Uh, but yeah, I mean the main the major kind of thing is the the actuators and the the frame that the whole bike sits onto, which is what Mike's just getting finished up now. Um, that's kind of the major the major build really. Uh, yeah, see now the, um, the controls on the bike, so this is the front brake and we've got the back brake down here. They now both operate this pedal, so when I squeeze that, that moves, like so. So we've got a frame that goes underneath that has the actuators attached to it. And then you've got um, a frame that fits inside this bike. And there's a piece of metal, I'll show you that, there's a piece of metal that goes through the middle of the bike. And then we've got um, cylinders that come off and onto the centre. Uh, the computer reg uh, sends a signal to these, these little things here which are pressure regulators. So these four, they're going, to be, they're going to be mounted onto the bike and actually make it lean from side to side. I don't know if we've so said that. On. <laughs> um, at the minute, there's enough force going through where well, each actuator will hold me up rather than just kind of steering it and it goes to a certain position or you're just on a one in the arcades where you've got your feet on the floor and you're just swinging yourself about. Um, this is actually balanced. So you can get to a point where you lose the balance on the bike. So I don't know if you've seen any videos of people on bikes where they they, they oversteer um, and then the bike wobbles over one side and they try and correct it and they wobble it back and the bike starts doing this. Well, in effect, that's exactly what you could do on this bike and it can, sim it can simulate that. You can practice um, dangerous situations. I think uh, one certain thing someone had spotted up was that if you you suddenly have a lorry in front of you um, and according to uh, what people have said a lot of riders will just hit the brake as hard as they can and all that happens is you get that the front wheel digs in your back wheel goes up and then all that happens is that the back wheel loses all traction and it just spins out and the bike ends up on its side and you go down the road but in reality you should counter steer to flick the bike out the other way it's the kind of thing that people say this is what you should do but without kind of having practice and doing that, you're never going to learn, and you're never going to be able to. You're never going to be able to do it. And how many people actually have a lorry pull out in front of them to kind of practice it anyway? So it's one of the things that we can possibly look into, and that people can have a go five times on the simulator, and kind of from there on can think, oh, next time I'll do this, or well, sorry, not next time, but <laughs> the first time it might happen to me, I yeah. might make the right decision. <laughs> You're on film, Dave. <laughs> <laughs>
So in effect, if you're on the if you're cornering, you've got to be able to lean the same force back so that you're stable. If you lean too far, then you would in effect fall off the bike, and if you didn't lean far enough, it would flip over and you'd fall off the other side of the bike. So these would be attached to the uh, to the bike. Obviously, they're upside down at the minute. If I was riding a bike, I would have turned the handlebars to the right, and I'd be going around the corner and I'd be leaning against these as you do on the bike. I'll be cornering and leaning against them. As I said before, I mean, it does neglect things like that you have slip on the back wheel of the bike and things like that, but it's kind of, it, it does the main basics towards what would happen. I think, especially if you're kind of a normal road user, you, sh you should get roughly the right forces.